Hi there. Thank you once again for joining me on the program, Your Doctor and COVID. I'm Dr. Mahendra Karpin. I'm the head of medical services and cardiology at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. We continue to speak about the COVID-19 pandemic, the way it's devastating the world and the way it's affecting us in Guyana and across the Caribbean. As usual, I'm wearing my mask to cover both the nose and the mouth, but I'll take it off so that we could continue our conversations today. Remember, if you have any questions or comments regarding the COVID-19 pandemic, please feel free to send a WhatsApp message to 620-6275, or you may send an email to docandcovid at gmail.com. So today we have an important milestone to celebrate. We have passed 200,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccines in Guyana. 200,000 doses. And we have had over 60,000 persons fully vaccinated against COVID-19. This is a tremendous and remarkable effort from the healthcare team in Guyana. And every person involved in this, including those who would have voluntarily taken their vaccines, you should be congratulated and we should all recognize that you have made a significant contribution, not just to yourselves, but to the country that we call Guyana. By taking your vaccines and for the healthcare workers, the contributions that you have made is by giving the vaccine to the population in this country. So thank you all very much for being a part of this effort to fight COVID-19 in Guyana. As we continue to speak, several questions continue to linger about vaccination in the era of COVID-19. And particularly, people are very concerned about who should get COVID-19 vaccines and who should not get COVID-19 vaccines. Well, there is one group of persons, just one group, who should not get the COVID-19 vaccine or should be very cautious. And those are persons who have a history of severe allergic reactions to vaccines. Severe allergic reactions. And that is the only group of persons who should be cautious and probably should not take the COVID-19 vaccine. Statistically, these persons make up less than 1% of the population. So we can infer that over 99% of the population should be taking the vaccine voluntarily if they so decide. A big concern, and this was a recurring issue that came out from the leadership at the Ministry of Health level, is that persons keep asking about the vaccination program and pregnancy. And the big question is, should pregnant women be vaccinated for COVID-19? Important question, because I have encountered this not just in the layman, but also in healthcare workers. We have had nurses and other healthcare workers, uh, doctors who are pregnant, who have hesitated and have questions about whether or not they should take their COVID-19 vaccine. The simple answer, again, is yes. Pregnant women in particular are a high-risk group if they were to get COVID-19. So to take the vaccine and prevent yourself from getting COVID-19 or severe COVID is definitely one of the recommendations. So to answer that question very clearly, yes, pregnant women can take the vaccine and they should take the vaccine. The next question that comes up quite often is, what are the risks of COVID-19 during pregnancy? So what happens if you were to actually get COVID-19 during pregnancy? Now, you can get all of the complications of COVID that are known, whether you're pregnant or not. 
but more importantly in the pregnant population you can have effects on the pregnancy on the baby and the mother there is an increased risk of hospitalization there is an increased risk of death in the pregnant mother who becomes positive with covid there's an increased risk of being admitted to the icu there is an increased risk of developing blood clots during pregnancy if you become COVID-19 positive. So these are all more reasons to be vaccinated against COVID-19 if you are pregnant. The next question is, are there any adverse effects to babies during lactation? Lactation is breastfeeding, of course. Now, important question because we always want to protect babies. We always want to protect the unborn. Now, if you were going to breastfeed a child and you are COVID positive, then it is recommended that you continue to breastfeed, but wear your mask, sanitize, and do all of the things that you can in order to prevent transmission of the infection from mother to baby or from the breastfeeding mom to the baby. Now, what are the benefits actually of getting vaccines and breastfeeding? Well, the baby can actually develop immunity in two ways. It can be transmitted through the breast milk when the baby is being breastfed or when the baby is in the womb the baby can actually develop immunity through the blood supply. And so that is one of the additional benefits of actually taking the COVID-19 vaccine when you are pregnant. Because if the mom develops the immunity properly after being fully vaccinated, then those antibodies or soldier defense mechanisms that the mom has, those can then be transmitted through the blood to the baby and the baby then develops its own immunity which comes from the mother. So the two ways in which baby can develop immunity, the first way is through the blood and the second way of course is through the breast milk. And so that answers the question of how antibodies can be transferred to babies. Two ways through blood and through breast milk that when babies are fed. Hospitalized pregnant women with COVID-19 are at increased risk for severe illness. So you want your pregnant women to be vaccinated so that they could reduce their chances of becoming severely ill if they are infected with COVID-19. About half of the hospitalized pregnant women with COVID-19 had symptoms. Some of the hospitalized pregnant women who had symptoms had very severe outcomes. And these are the severe outcomes include things like ICU admission, being put on a ventilator or a breathing machine, and unfortunately, there is also an increased risk of death. So those are important things to note about pregnancy and COVID-19 infection. So the infection in pregnant women can be very deadly. Another reason why we recommend that pregnant women should actually get their vaccine and not wait to get the infection to develop immunity. These are not just our opinions in Guyana, but these are opinions that are shared and actually pioneered by established international authorities that look at these entities, including the CDC, which says that pregnant women can choose to get vaccinated across the world. To be vaccinated is still a choice. It is not mandatory and it is not something that people will force you to do. 
the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, which is an authority on the subject, has said that vaccines should not be withheld from pregnant women. So if you are pregnant, that is no reason for you to be denied the vaccine. Remember at the beginning, I told you the only group of persons who should be cautious and sh maybe should not take the vaccine are those who have a known history of severe allergic reactions to vaccines or any component of the COVID-19 vaccine. So there are some key points to note about COVID-19 and women's health in particular. In terms of pregnancy, the COVID-19 vaccine has no adverse impact, no adverse impact. For fertility, the COVID vaccine has no impact. It doesn't make you less fertile. It doesn't make you more fertile. For the menstrual cycle, there is absolutely no impact of the COVID-19 vaccine. It does not change your monthly cycle. And it has no effect on puberty. So there are lots of questions as it relates to women's health and the vaccines. And the main ones you have seen that the vaccine does not influence. The vaccine does not influence pregnancy in any adverse way. It does not influence fertility. It does not influence your menstruation. And it does not influence puberty. What you need to know about COVID-19 and fertility, the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, as well as the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, recommends that pregnant or breastfeeding women and those seeking to become pregnant should receive the vaccine. Pregnant, breastfeeding, and women who want to become pregnant should take the vaccine. There are some things to note that if you have doubts, if you have any questions or queries, you should speak to your obstetrician, your family doctor, your healthcare provider, etc. The vaccine does not appear to interfere with fertility in men nor in women. And that's a big concern I have found, especially in West Indian population. Recently on an overseas trip to a Caribbean territory, this was one of the main concerns that I had encountered there among Caribbean people, especially Caribbean men, that the vaccine was actually developed to reduce fertility in our population. But that is not true. There is no effect of COVID-19 vaccines on fertility in men nor in women. There is no impact whatsoever on fertility. There's highly unlikely to be any long-term side effects from the COVID-19 vaccine as it relates to fertility and reproduction. Pregnant women are likely to transfer antibodies to the unborn child if they are vaccinated properly. So, and this transfer of antibody can occur through the blood because you know that mothers and babies share the same blood supply and um, antibodies, infection as well, can be transmitted from mother to child in the womb. Now, the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, again, an international authority on these topics, have issued a statement to commemorate National Infertility Awareness Week. And the message here is very clear. There's no ambiguity here. It's a very clear message. Everyone, everyone, including pregnant women and those seeking to become pregnant, should get a COVID-19 vaccine. So everyone, that includes pregnant women and those who would like to become pregnant, those persons should get the COVID-19 vaccine. The vaccines are safe and they are effective. 
So I hope that this would have answered a lot of your questions as it relates to COVID-19 vaccines, fertility, pregnancy, and breastfeeding. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to send a WhatsApp to 620-6275 or send an email to docandcovid at gmail.com. Thank you once again for joining me and do enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.